Yeah, Tell I me. do think, you know, the big metaphor for me in the book is, is about learning to be comfortable in my own skin. Mm. And that has taken a lot of work. And in some ways, I feel like I've gotten there. Uh, when it comes to work and career, I feel totally happy and settled and comfortable. Okay, well, I'm going to um, stop you because it's interesting that you use skin as a metaphor because I want you to tell the story about yeah. growing up with a skin disease. Yeah, I did, and that's why I used the metaphor. Um, when I was four years old, I was diagnosed with psoriasis. Uh, it is a skin disease that, uh, you know, it's an autoimmune disease, so it just creates lots of crusty skin. It looks skin. nasty. And particularly for a kid, it can cover your whole body. Yeah, and it, when I first got it, I only had it behind my ears, but at 11, I literally woke up one morning completely covered in scales, red scales that were bleeding and cracking. Well, that's good work. because, of course, sixth grade is when girls are at their most secure. Uh, I was not only at my most secure, I also had lovely friends because you know how kind and compassionate 11 year olds can be. Yes. Um, I had notes in my locker that I looked like the elephant man oh. and leave school before you infect anybody. You, get, and you are getting emotional just telling the story. Yeah, it was, it was really hard. But at the same time, um, you know, it became even harder for me because I, I, I completely, I think that's where I started to get really preoccupied with appearance. And covering up? And covering up. Covering up, but also that was my attraction to fashion. I mean, I think that's where it started is, you know, I wanted beauty. I wanted to be a cool kid. I wanted not to look like a monster. And, and in an in a interesting kind of way, uh, it, you know, I think my first inclination towards the fashion industry, because I went to work at Vogue, you know, straight out of college, uh, was because I, I, I was going after a dream, really. And but, it, it but, was sort of an unhealthy impulse. Well, but sort of, I mean, and you had an eating disorder, too, as I understand, right? Well, so it's all figured. Yes. But let me just stop you and say that you're using some terrible, harsh language between being a monster and being beautiful. Mm. Does it have to be one or the other? Can it well, be? it certainly doesn't have to be one or the other. It took me a very long time to learn that. Yeah. As a child, I, I think that it was very hard for me to see anything but those extremes. To be so filled with a kind of self-hatred at, at looking like I did and not being able to fit in and, and really not just fear of judgment but, but fear of you know, being mocked. I mean, it, all of these things come up in the book. Uh, and really played a, a part, I think, in how I saw myself. So long after we cleared up the disease, long after I started using medicine that, that really did get rid of it, um, I couldn't let go of that feeling. And then the medicine that, you know, kind of cured my skin started uh, tearing my skin, literally like paper. Mm. Um, my skin started to split like a zipper. Mm, it's called atrophy. So I have massive scars all over me that unless I wanted to get skin grafts, I'll, I'll never get rid of. Do you think, you're, you're sort of harsh with people with your style of advice. Yeah, well, I honed my criticality on myself. Is that where it comes from? Absolutely. So you would never say anything to, your, to the other that you wouldn't direct it yourself? That I wouldn't direct it myself. And, but I also think that part of my experience being on What Not to Wear for 10 years is that I have actually learned to have empathy for myself because I've learned to have empathy for other people. Well, that's how that works. Mm. Has, that, has that diminished your edge? It's definitely diminished my edge. I'm not nearly as snarky as I used to be. Um, and that's also part of the reason I wrote this book. I, I wanted to dimensionalize myself a little bit. You know, I'm on a, a format show, and I am a style coach and critic. That's how you know me. That's what you know about me. Um, it's not the same as who I am. Well, but it's a piece of you. Yes. And we're looking at, looking at some footage of you working right now. Are there moments when you think back at your non-empathic behavior that you're a little mortified by now in retrospect? No. You didn't hurt anybody? No. Because I think if you know the show, you understand that we do break people down to kind of build them back up. And that, that to me, does work. I mean, I've seen that work time and time again on the show. And people, you know, look, the show is also entertainment. We're not there. We're not doing your you're job. You're not doing a treatment show. Yeah, I understand that. Now, but the show is called What Not to Wear, right? Mm. So it's breaking them of that habit yes. and giving them tools with tools. which to kind of, you know, look, what, this is what my book is about. I think that style is very different from fashion. Fashion was what I went after when I was feeling incredibly insecure and monstrous on the inside. I went for... It's so painful to hear you keep using that word, monster. It, that, that doesn't strike you emotionally whenever no, you say it? No, it really you, doesn't. It, you it's, fell like a monster? I think if you have any kind of... Uh, you know, disease that, that makes you feel like an other.
that makes you feel like an alien, which it certainly did when I was a child, I think that's language and a vocabulary that you retain. I'm, I'm, I'm much more aware of it now. I feel much more for the child that I was um, in did. terms of empathy. Than you did. Than I did. I hated myself then. And it was very hard for you, me to get out of it. You say that with a smile. These are horrible things I'm, that have to I, go through. I'm, I don't say it with a smile. Um, I say it with the knowledge of being able to have worked through it and understanding the difference between what beauty and monstrous really does mean in terms of self-esteem because I've been able to do this work with other people. And what I see a lot of times that style can be a symptom of the way somebody actually feels about themselves. Sure. And that, that using that as the surface, you can actually change the way somebody feels because you can change what they see. Okay, I, I wanna articulate something you just said I think it's actually important that so what, what people project is saying something about how they feel and if you change that projection you can change the inside a little bit I have a, a section in the book called transmission versus translation so it's what you think you're saying when you're trying to hide and what actually people understand which isn't always the same thing